welcome everybody here and our media platform. Thank you for worshiping with us and thank you for tuning in and we just bless the Lord for the opportunity to stand before you in Christ Jesus name. Amen. To share a word. This is our communion Sunday and we pray and trust that something will be said to encourage you along the way. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, thank you uh, uh, Elder Francine for singing that song Heaven on Earth. And that's what the Lord saved us for. Amen. He didn't just save us so that we can gain heaven, but he saved us so that we can partner with him and give him legal access to this earth realm. And one of the uh, reason, uh, one of the access that God had in the beginning when he had created Adam and Eve. Amen. Amen. So that he can move in them and through them and everything was subject to them until they fail. Praise God. So uh, we, we trust not to keep you long. We want you to, if you will, turn to your Bible, uh, to the book of Hebrew. To the book of Hebrew. You might want to put everything else on, uh, on mute. Praise God. Hallelujah. When you find it, say amen. Hebrew, the second chapter. This is the New King James Version, and we're going to start at verse 10. We're going to start at verse 10. Notice, I'm sorry, yes, yeah, Hebrew 2nd chapter starting at verse 10 all the way down to verse 18. Notice what it says. It says, for it was fitting for him for whom are all things by whom are all things in bringing many sons to glory, to make the captives of their salvations perfect through suffering. For both he who suffered and those who are being uh, sanctified are all of one. For which reason he is not ashamed to call them brothering, saying, I would declare your name to my brother, and in the midst of the assembly, I will sing praise to you. Again, I will put my trust in him. And again, here am I, the children whom God has given me. Inasmuch then as the children has partake of the flesh and blood, he himself likewise shared the saying that through death he might destroy him who had the power of death, that is the devil. Somebody say, that is the devil. And release those who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. For indeed, he does not give aid to angels, talking about the fallen angels, but he does give aid to his seed, uh, to the seed of Abraham. Somebody say, I am the seed of Abraham. Therefore, in all things, he has to be made like his brothers, that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God to make uh, 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 appropriation for the sins of the people. For in that he himself has suffered, being tempted, he is able to aid those who are tempted. A text or a thought I would like to leave with you in this hour is hold fast your confidence to the end hold fast your confidence to the end and looking at the word confidence basically uh mean it mean poise conviction faith trust support loyalty and uh i i pray i praise god for the author of of this book hebrew uh, there are uh, many subjects concerning about the person uh, who written this book and some say it was Paul, some say Apollos and different ones and so forth and so on. But however, whoever written the book, we do know that they had evidence of witnesses who was there when Jesus was on scene. And, uh, and this person uh, who written this book, they had to be knowledgeable, they had to be educated concerning about the death, uh, the death barrier and the resurrection. And they specifically talked about the high priest. So they knew something about sanctification. They knew something about the priesthood. And, uh, and so this encouraged me in terms of how they laid it out. And as they began to give scripture 
uh, as we begin to read this epistle, it let us know that Jesus Christ himself is the high priest. Amen. And so uh, with that said, once again, hold fast your confidence to the end. Uh, if we look at verse uh, 2, uh, uh, verse 10, it basically talking about Jesus was was perfect in his day, but he had to learn obedience as a man. And you find that up. You find that in chapter five and verse uh, eight and nine. You don't have to turn there now, but in your own time so that he might accomplish God's kingdom purpose. Jesus had to take on flesh just like you and I. Amen. To do that, he had to suffer. He received glory and honor on Sunday. In fact, because of his obedience, suffering and death on Friday. So we know that the victory came on Sunday because of his obedience. Amen. And if you look at uh, 11 and 12, it, bur- it basically uh, uh, simply to uh, when, uh, when you became a Christian, you enter into the family of God. Somebody say, I'm, I am the family of God. Yes, you have been engrafted into the family of God because of Jesus Christ. He adopted you and you became a brother or a sister to Jesus. Now, and we need to know that. And I know, I know we do know that, but how much do we really, really do know that? Praise God that we are brothers. We are brothers and sisters. We are joint heirs, Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Now he, now uh, his working to sanctify you so that he so that uh, he's not ashamed to call you his brother or sister. So he's constantly working. The word of God said that uh, he's, he's yet making intercession on our behalf. Amen. Uh, he's sitting on the right hand of the father, yet making intercession. And thank God he's making intercession because sometimes we get our back against the wall. Isn't that right? Amen. Sometimes we are caught into a situation that we did not even create. But thank God for his death, burial, and his resurrection. He's yet making intercession on the behalf of us. And you look at uh, verse 14 and 15 uh, 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 comprised together. Jesus conquered death to free people from the fear of death. Yet, because Satan is the father of lies, you find that in uh, St. John, the 8th chapter, in the 44th verse, uh, he'll try to trick you, talking about Satan, uh, remember then that the devil no longer has the power of death. And that, and you, and we just read that up there in Hebrews, the second chapter, verse 14. We just read that. Uh, the gun he's been uh, intimidating you with has no bullets. The very gun that the enemy has been intimidating you with, it has no bullets. Bullets. Jesus Christ emptied it. Uh, I'm sorry. Jesus Christ uh, emptied its chambers into himself. Thus, all Satan can do is deceive you into thinking the gun still has ammunition. But the fear of death should no longer make you a slave. And you can really read up on it when Paul uh, give conversation to this in first. Matter of fact, let's just turn there real quick. Let's go to first Corinthians. I think we as saints really need to read up on our. On our warranty. This warranty has no expiration date. And if you look at uh, 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 15, beginning at verse 51, it say, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep. And this is the King James Version. But we shall still, um, but we shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of the eye at the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised together, uh, be raised incorruptible. And we shall be changed for this corruptible must put on incorruptible and that this mortal must put on immortality. So when the corruptible shall have put on incorruptible and this mortal shall put on immortality, then shall 
be brought to pass the saying that is written. Death is swallowed up in victory. Somebody say death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy stain? O grave, where is thy victory? The stain of death is what? Sin. Somebody say the stain of death is sin. And the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God which give us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Come on for that. So Jesus have taken this stain out of death. Where we was bound because of sin, we're no longer slaves to sin because Jesus have conquered it. Hallelujah. Glory be to the Lamb of God. You should be excited. No matter how much he tried to tempt you, no matter what he bring up in your path, you know that you are no longer bound to him. Amen. The contract has gone up. The blood has been shed. Hallelujah. And we are redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Verse 16 talks about fallen angels that rebel against God have no opportunity for redemption. Yet remarkably, God offered help to us, Abraham's children, through faith. We are the seed of Abraham. Look at somebody and point up and say, you are the seed of Abraham. It, it turn to somebody else and say, you look much better right now than you did yesterday. Because you are the seed of Abraham. Somewhere in the future, you look much better than you look right now. Hey, somewhere in the future, you look much better than you look right now. Why? Because you are the seed of Abraham. We've been washed in the blood of the Lamb. Hallelujah. Glory be to the Lamb of God. Academically, well, let's look at uh, 17 and 18 all together here uh, as it's being broken down. Academically speaking, a male doctor knows the pain a laboring mother is going through. But a female doctor who has actually experienced childbirth herself can truly empathize. As a mother, she felt that pain. As a doctor, she can help others through it. Jesus is a merciful and faithful high priest. Somebody say hallelujah. He has truly felt your pains, and he can empathize with you. Moreover, he can deliver you from sin and enable you to overcome your circumstances. Hallelujah. Let's look at St. John 16, 33. Let's go there real quick. St. John 16, 33. This is the King James Version. When you find it, say amen. Notice what it says. These, these things have I spoke unto you, that in me ye or you may have what? Peace. In the world you shall have what? Trouble. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. So we cannot overcome the world in and out of ourselves, but we overcome the world through who? Through Christ Jesus. Somebody shout hallelujah. 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 He can deliver you from sin and enable you to overcome your circumstances because Jesus Christ have overcome the world. Hold fast your confidence to the end. Hallelujah. Let's look at Hebrews, the third chapter. And we're going to begin at verse 1. This is the New King James Version. Hallelujah. Notice what it says. Therefore, holy brethren, somebody say that's you, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high priest of your confession, Jesus Christ. The second verse, who was faithful to him, who appointed him, 
as Moses also was faithful in all his house. For this one has been counted worthy of more glory than Moses, inasmuch as he who built the house has more honor than the house. For every house is built by someone, but he who built all things is God. And Moses indeed was faithful in all his house as a what? As a what? For a testimony of those things which uh, would be spoken afterwards. But Christ, the son, I'm sorry, but Christ as a son over his own house, who house we are if we what? Hold fast the confidence of the rejoicing of the hope firm to the end hallelujah somebody say hold on to the end now uh if we look at uh, 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 uh verse one uh it basically saying the author remind christians that god doesn't ha uh, god doesn't save us so that we could just have heaven he don't save us so that we can just go to heaven jesus save us to partner with him in his kingdom agenda on earth. So there is a kingdom agenda. Somebody say there is a kingdom agenda. Come on and say there is a kingdom agenda. Praise God. And Jesus himself, when he came to this earth realm, he came to, a amen, uh, to, uh, to take care of the agenda that the Father has given him to implement in this earth will. Remember when Jesus said, your kingdom has come, your will be done. Where? on earth as it is in heaven so there should be a reflection of heaven in this earth realm and you are the one that god is able to mirror uh heaven on this earth i appreciate that song that uh elder uh, uh francine sang i didn't know that she was going to sing it today but heaven touch what earth heaven touching earth so uh, uh so he saved us to partner with him in his kingdom agenda on earth to share in a heavenly calling to be his companion in the messianic kingdom that is to come. Hallelujah. That is to come. So we are partners and we are in relationship. We are joint heirs to the kingdom of God. So he did not save us, amen, just to go to heaven, but he saved us to carry out kingdom of gender. Amen. Look at somebody and get busy. You know, sometimes we feel that we need to get busy when we come to the four walls, when we come to church on Sunday. But no, th this is where the training takes place. Amen. The work is out there. Somebody say the work is out there. Sometimes we get upset if, if people don't call us to do this and do that, or uh, if they don't promote me and this and that. There's a lot of promotion can be done out there. Amen. And you can be called to go out there and go and make disciples. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Somebody need to see the light of the Lord Jesus Christ. Somebody need some joy. Somebody need peace. Somebody need a howdy, howdy, glory be to God. Somebody need a helping hand. Hallelujah. Glory be to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. So there's a lot of work. So he called us, amen, to be part of his agenda, amen, so that the mandate of the kingdom of God can be made manifest. Hallelujah. Thank God for that. And if we look at uh, uh, the, the same chapter, uh, as I begin to summarize uh, the verse 2 through 6, Moses, uh, uh, Mo Moses faithfully served God, delivering his word to Israel, and oversaw the establishment of the tabernacle and the sacrificial system. Isn't that something? God desires sacrifices. God desires sacrifices. Amen. If it's, not a, if it's not a sacrifice, then it's not faith. Some of you had to struggle to get here this morning. Amen. Some of you, some of you tossed all night long, but you're still here this morning. Amen. That's a sacrifice that God can receive to himself in spite of. In spite of the circumstances, you're here today. Hallelujah. Can you just lift your hand in his presence in Jesus' name? Amen. In spite of the circumstances, you are here today. Why? Because you are given a sacrifice to the, uh, to the Lord. You prepare your heart as a sacrifice. You prepare the tables of your heart, amen, to place sacrifices upon it with thanksgiving, with praise and worship. Come on and give the Lord Jesus Christ a praise offering for that. 
Hallelujah. We didn't wake up in the hospital this morning. Come on now. Our house did not burn down for day this morning. Come on. Glory be to God. Our limbs, we still yet have the use and the activity of our limbs. We woke up this morning in our right mind. Hallelujah. Glory be to the Lamb of God. And we can say what we didn't, what we didn't finish yet. Today is a new day. Hallelujah. And I'm still victorious in Jesus. Why? Because I'm a joint heir. Kingdom of God carrying out his agenda. Um, Sometimes the agenda starts with us, isn't that right? And then it's broad, broad. Praise God. While we're trying to straighten out somebody else's house, praise God, we can straighten out our own house. Hallelujah. The agenda. I believe that'll preach. Hallelujah. The agenda. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Uh, glory be to God. So I say, uh, so Moses faithful, uh, faithfulness served God, delivering his word to Israel and oversaw uh, the establishment and the tabernacle and sacrificial system. These Jewish Christians, readers, reverence Moses. And we know that they did that back up under the day, up under Judaism. They gave a lot of reference, uh, a lot of recognition to Moses. Praise God. But Jesus is worthy of more glory than Moses. Just as the builder has more honor than the house, thus the two uh, cannot be uh, fairly compared. Though Moses was faithful as a servant in all God's household. Verse 5, as we break it down, uh, Christ was faithful as a son over God's household. Uh, if you look at verse 6, as we summarize it, the son over the house has more say-so than a faithful servant. You have more say-so than any servant. Why? Because Jesus Christ is our pattern. Jesus said, I call you not servants, but I call you my friend. Do you hear me what I'm saying? We have, we have more honor than what the devil is trying to appease us with. We have more honor, praise God, than what they're trying to give you on your job. We have more honor, amen, in this society than what our government is trying to give us. Amen. You ought to say, I have more honor because I'm a child of God. There's a kingdom agenda Praise God. You know, uh, God don't take pleasure of us falling out and fighting all the time, but he take pleasure when we are busy. Amen. Touch yourself and say, what are you doing with yourself? Amen. What are you running from? Amen. How much, how much kingdom work are you really carrying out on a day-to-day -day basis? Amen. How many people have you witnessed to yesterday? How many people have you witnessed to last month? Amen. How many people you lay hands on, they got healed. Amen. But if you're not careful, we've been too busy consuming ourselves with the things that we want. We're trying to promote ourselves. We ain't one thing to the other. But where is the kingdom of gender? We've been too busy. Amen. Trying to pour into ourselves. It's a dangerous thing to measure yourself by yourself. Some people measure themselves by their education. Some people measure themselves, amen, by their wealth. Some people measure themselves by, amen, by the influence and the affluences that they have in this earth realm. But if we can measure ourselves by the Lord Jesus Christ, it supersedes anything that this earth has to offer. Come on to get the Lord Jesus Christ praise for that. So we have more say so than what the world has to offer. There's a lot of restless people. When people, praise God, have you just witnessed this? That sometimes when people, uh, people have time on their hand, they don't know what to do. They either fall asleep or they get in trouble. And, or they, they, praise God. Or they, or they get busy doing something. Why? Because they don't know how to find that peace within themselves. I got to keep busy. I got to keep busy. I got to keep busy. It's like that rabbit in the hole. Look at your neighbor and say, don't, trust the don't, don't chase the rabbit. And don't trust him either. Amen? He has a clock in his hand. Yeah. Yeah. The key, somebody say kingdom of gender. That, that wasn't in my notes, but I thought that was okay. Amen. Hallelujah. 
Okay, we're, getting, we're coming to the end. So uh, turn with me to Hebrews, the fourth chapter. Hebrews, the fourth chapter, and we're going to begin at verse 14. I really want to begin at verse 13, but we're, we're going to uh, begin at verse 14. Seeing then that we have a great high priest, I'm about to say Jesus, who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our confidence. Somebody say, hold fast your confidence. For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but was in all points tempted as we are, yet without what? Sin. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. In one sense, Jesus is like all of us. Somebody say in one sense. He has endured incredible temptation, suffering, and hardship. Didn't he? Those of us that read our Bible, we know that he did that. Yet, in another, he is like none of us. He has never sinned. Therefore, he is the perfect high priest. He can sympathize with you or with us in our weaknesses and suffering. Yet, since he resisted completely, he can also help you. He can help us. Why? Because he know what it is to be tempted, but he did not fall into it. He felt the pressure that you and I go through with. But thank God that he did not yield because now he's able to offer to us what he experienced himself. And his strength and his power came from his father. So we have victory, victory through him. Amen? We have victory through him. Praise God. And so he can help us. Hallelujah. I think that is so powerful. He can help us. Somebody say he can help us. Look at somebody say he can help us. Hallelujah. There's a lot of business that is out there. Busy, busy. People are just too busy. A lot of things are too busy. The internet is too busy. Amen. But even in the midst of all of this business that's running horizontally, Jesus can help us. A lot of traffic out there, but Jesus can help us. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. So verse 16 in that same chapter, as we summarize it, prayer is the believer's passport into the spiritual realm. Can you say that with me? Prayer is the believer's passport into the spiritual realm. Not big mama, not grandmama, not the Ouija board, not the tarot cards, not, in, and not those uh, uh, necromancies and none of those things. Hallelujah. Prayer is the believer's passport into the spiritual realm. So when you are tempted to give up, the temptation is actually an invitation to draw you near to the king's throne so you may receive mercy and find grace. Isn't that something? That's powerful. Mercy is not getting what you deserve. Grace is getting what you do not deserve. Amen. The, the word of God tells us that he does not treat us as our sin deserve. Amen. But thank God for Jesus Christ, who suffered, bled, died, and risen on the third day morning. Amen. He took it on all of our sins in order that we may have the breakthrough. We own the victorious through him. Amen. Amen. Irregardless of how you feel, you may be feeling real good and like you on cloud nine. Amen. But that's superficial. Praise the Lord. If that cloud nine is not on the foundation of Jesus Christ, it's going to come down. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. In my conclusion, let's go to Philippians. I forgot to give you this. Philippians, the first chapter. This is the amplified version. Philippians, first chapter and verse six. Hallelujah. 
Hold fast your confidence to the end. Philippians 1, 6, this is the Amplified Version. Notice what it says. And I am convinced and sure of this very thing, that he who begun a good work in you will continue until the day of Jesus Christ. Right up to the time of his return, developing that good work and perfecting and bringing it to full completion in you. Hallelujah. Look at somebody and say, I'm just confident that God is going to complete in you what he started out with. Hallelujah. We're not, we're not victorious in our successes, successfulness that we have gained in this earth realm. That's only temporal. But thank God for Jesus Christ, we have life and life everlasting. We have eternal everlasting life. Amen. We can truly say that there is life after death. Amen. And praise the Lord in, every, in all of our accomplishment here in this earth realm, Praise the Lord. It is not going to be mentioned when we get up there in the kingdom of God. Amen. Praise God. The only thing that's going to be mentioned amen, as he begins to play back the film, if you will, to see how you govern yourself in your day-to-day -day walk. Hallelujah. Praise God. Whether you was experiencing a mountaintop or when you was going down through the valley. But I want to leave you with this. The word of God tells us in the book of Isaiah that Jesus Christ himself, he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. Amen. That is an exchange that can take place. He take my ashes, amen, and turn it in for beauty. He have turned my mourning into dancing. Hallelujah. Pray. He have taken my sorrow and given me what? Joy. Only the Lord Jesus Christ can give us that everlasting joy. Do you hear me what I'm saying? When it seems like you're going through, just realize that the Lord is setting you up to just get closer to him. Amen. And all you got to do is just begin to call on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Prepare the heart. Prepare the altars of your heart and begin, and begin to give him praise. Begin to give him honor. Amen. Begin to reverence him and pull him. Somebody say pull him. Pull him right in the midst of your situation. You know, you know when you get ready to cook something on a grill, praise the Lord, you take that food and you pull it right down in the midst of that fire. And I'm telling you that whatever you're going through with, just pull it, amen, just pull the Lord Jesus Christ right in the midst of that situation. Why? Because he can work it out. Amen. Tell somebody he can work it out. Hallelujah. Just pull him right in the midst. Amen. That very thing that's in the high places of your mind, you may have to labor a little bit, but just pull him right in the midst of it. Hallelujah. The old folks say, uh, just to have a little talk with Jesus will make everything all right. Amen. Amen. Praise God. My grandmother just said uh, like this all the time. She said, she said, she said, my heart is fixed and my mind is made up. I won't take nothing for my journey now. And this is why it's good to be in a community of believers. Amen. Why? So that you can worship together, so that you can testify, so that you can pray for one another, so you can encourage one another along the way. Like I said earlier, there's a lot of traffic in this earth realm. There's a lot of information in this earth realm. People are dealing with feeling taunted. Uh, uh, people are feeling vexed. Uh, uh, people are feeling uh, vexations of spirits and so forth and so on. And just think about it. Think about it, my brothers and my sister. How many people you know right now being tormented? Amen. Demons are being released in this earth realm. I mean, yeah, I mean, watch this now. We can blame it on COVID all you want to, but the demons have been released in this earth realm. Amen. Suicidal has gone up. Come on now. You used to hear about suicide, amen, on this side of the railroad track. But now you hear suicide on both sides of the railroad track. Y'all know I'm telling the truth up in here, up in here. 
Praise the Lord. And people are medicating, trying to medicate those demons. Amen. You cannot medicate a demon. The best thing that you can do for a demon, amen, is make an appointment, amen, with a born-again believer, amen, and allow yourself to go through some inner healing and deliverance, sir. Amen. And when you begin to call on the name of Jesus, those devils, they have a knee and they will have to bow. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hold fast to your confidence to the end. Amen. Don't give up in the midst of what God is doing. Don't give up, amen, in the midst of, amen, of this dark world. Amen. Because there is light at the end of the tunnel. And if the truth, amen, was to be made known and if the truth were told, amen, you carry part of that light. Look at somebody and say, you carry part of that light. Amen. Jesus came. Amen. He called us and he said that he was the light of the world and he made us to become lights. And we are light. We are city that cannot be hidden. Amen. The word of God said, let your light shine. Amen. Let your light shine. Why? Because there's a, pe there's a lot of people, they're walking in darkness. And don't let them fool you. They're looking for the light. If they, when they go to the nightclub, they're looking for the light. Amen. When they go to the dope house, they're looking for the light. Amen. When they go to the whole house, they're looking for the light. Amen. When they find themselves doing this and doing that, they're looking for the light. Amen. But you need to let your light shine. That when they come to the intersection of their life, and when they see the two rows meeting together, they can say, yes, I saw the light in brother so-and-so. Yes, I saw the light in sister so-and-so. Amen. Give them a reason, amen, to want to try Jesus Christ. Give them a reason to be drawn to the light. Don't get on the dance floor with them. Amen. Don't drink with them. Amen. Don't lay in the same bed with them. But let your light shine. People looking for an answer. The earth has a lot of answers. Amen. There, there is an earth answer and there is a kingdom answer. There is a heaven answer. And what they need, they need to hear what heaven has to say about this situation. That's why we cannot afford not to come to service on Sundays. We cannot afford, amen, to come on Tuesdays, praise God. This is where discipleship take place. This is where training take place. This is where you come into the filling station and get filled up with the word of God. Amen. As I begin to listen to different one testimony, amen, it inspired me to want to testify. Hallelujah. The word of God said that we are the overcomers by the blood of the lamb and by the word of our what? Testimony. Hallelujah. Somebody ought to give him praise for that. When I walked in this sanctuary this, uh, this afternoon, my dear sister came to me and she testified. And she testified concerning about one Tuesday night of uh, the word of knowledge had came forth concerning about uh, somebody was having misery in their back and in, and in their hip. And she came up to me and testified today and said, it was me. Just by her testifying, it meant I was encouraged. We need to be encouraged by hearing what the Lord have done with one another. Amen. Praise the Lord. Do you have a testimony that you're not ashamed of? Do you have a testimony that can, that can be like a light bulb? Somebody say, turn the testimonies on. People need to hear it. People need to hear that you wasn't, amen, when you was born into this earth room, that you wasn't born saved. They need to know that you have a past and now you have a testimony. That song that we used to sing, look what the Lord has done. Look what the Lord has done. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the word of God tell us that Jesus Christ, he became that sacrifice for our salvation so that we can experience redemption. The best of our righteousness, the word of God said, is like filthy rags. Hey, man, this is why we need the Lord Jesus Christ, so that we can experience his holiness, so that we can experience the redemption power, so that the Lord Jesus Christ can pour, can continue to pour in the Holy Ghost so that we can be used in the gifts of the Holy Spirit, so that we can go out and make disciples. We can go out and invite people. We can go to homes and have prayer meetings. Amen. We can testify over the telephone. 
Amen. Rather than testifying about the department store. Amen. Testify about the goodness of the Lord. We need to, we, we need to change our frequencies. You know, and, and uh, I, I thank God for Pastor Hall, and I, I, cannot, I, I cannot say the right numbers, and uh, maybe Minister Cedric know, but I did not know that there is a, uh, there is a uh, kingdom of heaven frequencies that people play. But the world has a frequency, and what they did, they dumbed it down. So you have two frequencies. And so, and, and, and I watched that thing on YouTube. And so for those who change the frequency from what the, er, from what the world has to offer, amen, the sound of that frequency that, that came from the kingdom of God, it sounds more clear, it's more pleasant, it's more warm, it's more, it, it invites you. It's literally almost like a portal. It's, almost, it, it's like pulling you into, amen, the arms of the Lord. And I don't know if we can, the, the keyboard might be already tuned for that. I don't know. But if we can just, amen, tune our stuff, amen, to that frequency. And let's see what God, see, the world has an answer. If you're looking for an answer, watch this, watch this. I don't mean no harm. But, you know, but when we have an ailment, we don't too much go to the doctor anymore. We go to the internet. We self, we self-diagnose ourselves. Amen. We, and, and, man, and when we mess around, you mess around and read something you want to read about what you're going through, and now you're scared. Go on, tell the truth. And then, and then when you see the doctor, you tell the doctor what you need. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But what heaven has to say about your situation? You see what I'm saying? Heaven don't care anything about what's happening here. It will, it will penetrate right through it. Why? Because we are the children of God. Amen. I'll leave with you one more time. Hold fast your confidence to the end. Jesus went to the grave and he got up on the third day morning, declaring that all power in heaven and earth is in his hands. Amen. If you're sick and tired of being sick and tired, come to Jesus. Amen.